we all know that vibriosis is a major problem in stream forming there are different methods to control vibriosis like probiotics phasebiotics or bacteriophages and organic acids last year when i went to bangladesh to conduct a training program on fish health management i met mr martin gurin who is a senior nutritionist he did his masters on fish nutrition in auburn university usa he has 30 years experience as a consultant in fish nutrition fish and shrimp nutrition and 20 years he worked in uh, uh, asia and he worked for uh, some of the corporate companies in india too at present he is with a company called as adcu giving technical service to the customers in southeast asia uh, recently i have requested him to share his knowledge on organic acids and uh, short chain fatty acids uh, how they control vibriosis and he has readily accepted we are very fortunate thank you very much martin and over to you good afternoon dr ravi thank you very much for the opportunity um, to let us talk today uh, about uh, organic acids and how they can be a, a good tool uh, against uh, vibrio infection i know you've been speaking about vibrio Uh, to to the farmers, today's presentation probably fits quite well after your your presentation. Now, vibrio bacteria, as farmers know, have been a major threat in sheep farming for many years since the start of the industry with vibriosis, uh, known as vibriosis earlier, or uh, luminescent bacteria infections, but later on associated with syndromes like early mortality syndrome or later named apen which had a major impact on the thai shrimp industry and other uh, shrimp production uh, countries and also the um, white feces syndrome which is a major uh, syndrome here in india where vibrio species are been associated which has a big impact in other asian countries now Another thing is with vibrio, we should remember is that very often they are co-infection pathogens associated with viral infection like white spot viruses. And when they do this, they aggravate the mortality in a very severe manner. So they also associated there and they are very critical enemy and we don't have that many tools to fight against them. You know, antibiotics have been looked at initially but they have proved to be relatively inefficient because they lead to a rapid resistant build up in the pond and lead to deposition of antibiotic residues in the shrimp which has led many of the shrimp importing countries to ban those the use of those antibiotics and to reject a lot of containers due to antibiotic residues found in the shrimp including containers many containers from india most of the certification prog programs also prohibit the use of such antibiotics the problem is that vibrio is naturally present everywhere in the shrimp farming environment and can hit at any time and it can come from not only from the green but both the yellow and the green colonies which can be pathogenic the initial problem is that you find those colonies in the in the pond and they thrive under low dissolved oxygen condition at the bottom of the pond where uh, shrimp tend to feed and scavenge for organic waste as a result the gut becomes a major point of entry for those bacteria those vibrio bacteria are opportunistic pathogens that can infect the, the the gut and the pancreas the hepatopancreas at any time when given a chance So what tools do we have to, to, to fight those bacteria apart from antibiotics? Organic acids have been looked at and found to be to a certain extent, extent effective. They are organic compounds with acidic properties which often have antibacterial and or antifungal properties. There are many types of organic acids. So among them you'll find formic acid, propionic acid, butyric acids, which are short chain fatty acids, which have been used in the feed industry for many years, especially in feed and food preservation. Now the use expanded in animal feeds to replace antibiotic waters 
when these were banned by EU in 2006. And they, we saw quite some success because the acidification properties helped promote good bacteria like lactic bacteria and better gut health. So the success that they face in, in this application with land animals like poultry or swine led feed companies to look at applying them in aquaculture feeds too. However, the question is whether they could be effective also in shrimp. Now, when you look at those species and the monogastric animals like broiler and pig, you find that they have a very different digestive physiology, pH and temperature compared to uh, aquaculture species and especially shrimp and the uh, short uh, different transition time. If you look at the pH of those broiler and pig, it tends to be uh, quite low until the end of the intestine. So this low pH, it means acidifying effect of short chain fatty acids can be effective to promote the digestion process in those animals. However, if you look at aquaculture species, the, the pH tends to be more neutral or even alkaline. If you look at shrimp, pH varies from seven to nine inside the gut of the shrimp. So at this higher pH, can they be effective, especially because you have a buffering effect by the water from the pond, which is alkaline. So remember, the gut of the shrimp is very short and that allows the water from the pond to have a buffering effect inside the gut of the shrimp. So the acidification properties of short chain fatty acid can be easily neutralized there. This has led us to um, looking at uh, formulating uh, different types of organic acids so that we could overcome this problem and that we have created a, pro a product called Bactin Lacqua, which is a reactive product on the carrier, which allows it to be uh, safer to handle and allows us to have less leaching compared to liquid uh, organic acids and give a more flexibility in formulation. And the product is formulated to help the synergy between several types of organic acid. A certain category of organic acids in bacteria aqua will damage the cell wall of the bacteria to create certain porosity that will allow the acidifying organic acids, like short chain fatty acids, to enter the cell wall and acidify, reduce the pH of the uh, inside the cell of, of the bacteria. And this leads to a number of phenomena like a blocking of the cell metabolism, an inhibition of the enzyme, metabolic enzyme of the bacteria, inhibition of the replication of the DNA, and therefore uh, of the multiplication of bacteria, a blocking of absorption of nutrients. All this leads to energy depletion, bacteriostatic effects, and all this ends up in causing the death of the cell. And we have found that, you know, in this unique combination, very low dosage can be very effective against most of the pathogenic bacteria faced in aquaculture. We have tested, you know, different inclusion with, you know, two to five kilo per ton and find that, you know, those low inclusion, even at two to three kilo per ton, could lead to a bacteriocidal effect on pathogenic strains of Vibrio, like Vibrio arberi or several uh, isolate of Vibrio taken from shrimp infected by Vibriosis and also other uh, pathogenic bacteria found in aquaculture. So with just two to three kilo, we can get a strong effect. The beauty of this uh, product is that when you apply it on probiotic bacteria, you don't have the same effect. We have tested on several a number of probiotic bacteria like Lactococcus lactis or Bacillus subtilis or Lactobacillus plantarum and other types. And we found that at this low dosage, you did not have any effect against the bacteria. Actually, you need to have a much higher dose of uh, bacteria to, uh, to have a strong effect on those uh, probiotic bacteria up to 10 or even 20 uh, kilo of product per, per ton of feed. So you have there a synergy between the product 
and the probiotic bacteria because uh, bacteria can reduce the number of vibrio inside the gut or the shrimp, making space for those probiotic bacteria, having giving them more nutrient to use and grow better. We have also looked at testing the product under um, different uh, pH condition reflecting the pH condition of the shrimp and tested it against uh, several strains of Vibrio isolated from uh, shrimp farms where with, from infected shrimp. And we compared it to two other organic acid products and found that basically at different pH, you had a different results. We found that at pH 7, um, when you needed only 1.5 kilo per ton of product A or bacteria aqua, uh, you needed up to 5 kilo for uh, product C. But when you increase the, the pH, we found that product A and product C had uh, needed a much higher dose to be effective against the Vibrio bacteria. You needed at uh, pH 7.5, a double of the dose of product A. Uh, pH uh, 8, you need up to 4 kilo per ton of product A, and I'm not even talking about product C because for both those uh, pH 7.5 and pH 8, you need more than 9 or even 10 kilo of product to to kill the Vibrio bacteria, whereas with bacteria aqua, you only with 2 kilo per ton, you had a positive effect. So thanks to the synergy of the organic acids. We also did some challenges uh, with uh, the, the product in live shrimp, working in Vietnam with a shrimp vet laboratory, Dr. Lok Tran's team, who had three treatments, a negative control treatment where the shrimp were not infected, a positive treatment where the shrimp were infected with a high concentration of Vibrio paramolyticus, which is the Vibrio causing early mortality syndrome, and a treatment, a bacterial treatment, where the shrimp were also infected with the same dose of Vibrio paramelticus, but the aquarium was treated with three gram per liter of bacterial aqua. And then the Dr. Lockton stream looked at the symptoms and survival of the shrimp for a period of 24 hours, looking at some of the symptoms that you find in EMS, like hepatopancreas discoloration, reddening of the antenna and opacifying of the muscles. Interestingly, after just uh, 24 hours, you know, up to 87% of the positive control, that means Vibrio infected shrimp, were uh, died. So you had only 13% survival compared to 100% of those who were not infected and 60% which is almost five times more for the shrimp that were infected with real paramoticus, but treated with bacterial aqua. And when you look at the hepatopancreas cells, we also saw a beneficial, beneficial effect of the synergic blend of organic acids because the positive control shrimp, infected shrimp, had damaged hepatic cells with detachment of the hepatopancreatic tubules Whereas in those uh, applied the synergic blend of organic acid, you had uh, no uh, effect on the organ uh, on the tubules of the hepato hepatocytes. In conclusion, bacterial aqua is a carefully selected formulated of organic acids which have been tested in shrimp. Uh, which have uh, very strong antibacterial effect against Vibrio bacteria and other pathogenic bacteria, and which play a synergic role when applied with uh, probiotic and beneficial bacteria, which are not affected at the low doses, doses that are affecting Vibrio bacteria. And this leads to enhanced survival at the farm thanks to the protection by bacteria in aqua against a pathogenic vibrio like Appen vibrio paramoticus. One aspect I did not have time to talk about, but we have done some trials too, is that when you use the product, you also have an additional if benefit of growth promotion because you have better gut health. So if you need to 
have more information on, on the product or our products, please uh, do not hesitate contacting my colleague, Mr. Gout, with his contacting details here. Thank you so much.